This is our base clinic, and um, this is just to help equip a couple of the members on our team. So, Frank, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Frank Boxberger. <laughs> hey, I'm Dustin Blatnick, and we're just here going to share a couple of things about base. And so, um, let's start with just getting to know the base a little bit. You kind of want to explain the different parts of the base? Sure. Okay. Um, well, obviously, this is a four string base. There's a five string and a six string. The five string typically has a whole string lower, which is tuned to a B. And then there's a six string that then has an additional uh, string, which would be tuned to a C. And um, there's different actual lengths. Uh, the standard bases uh, from the nut to the bridge is either 33, 34, or 35. And so it's really important to pick a base that uh, you feel comfortable with. Um, of course, the longer, the better, but that's only if you're comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, as far as the pickups, um, some bases have one pickup too, and we're gonna be through this demo um, showing the different sounds that you get from the front pickup versus the rear pickup. Um, intonation and uh, action, I believe, is really important. If you're playing a bass that uh, takes uh, a lot of pressure to push down, uh, I have a feeling you're not going to be flowing. As yeah, well. I actually like using the lighter gauge strings and um, and having a lower action on the bass. So just or or guitar, which I'm obviously holding the six string guitar here. Um, we're going to do a little bit of playing in a moment, so that's why we have a guitar and a bass. But whether it be guitar or bass, I really like to have right. a lower action. Yeah. It's just easier to press down. And part of the way you get that is just by having lighter gauge strings. Right. And uh, it's interesting because on guitar, you buy strings based on the high E string. So you'd buy a 10, 11, or a 9. Yeah. Uh, what do you uh, prefer? Uh, on guitar? Yeah. Not, 9 okay. or 10. It okay. really actually depends on the scale of the neck for me or okay. what guitar I'm playing. Yeah. And then bass is just the opposite. You usually pick them based on the low E string and they go 95 up to 120. Again, I love the 95 for the same reason. It's okay. easier to play, uh, very responsive, but if you really like those low, gut-wrenching bass notes, then yeah. you would want to go with the heavier gauge string. Yeah, or a five string where you get that right. low beat. Absolutely, yeah. right. Good, so we got the body of the guitar, we've got the neck, we've got the head. The head is where the tuners are. Um, we've got the pickups in the body. We have the control knobs right. that control. Want to explain those real quick? Get, sure. Get the uh, technician of the group here. So. Uh, tip, typically, uh, you can have a lot of these, but typically one is volume, one is tone, uh, and then uh, typically a switch that will toggle from the front pickup, both pickups, back pickup. Um, I'm going to actually put it in the middle. I, I sometimes prefer a balanced um, pickup setting so you get some of the treble and the bass from the back. Uh, one thing I was going to mention, you can even see I have a little magnet here with a, an Allen wrench because uh, I like to make sure the action is perfect and the intonation is perfect. So I actually keep a little Allen wrench here to try to get that action as low as I can without any fret buzz. Um, along with that, um, you can, uh, as you notice back here on the bridge, these are all a different, uh, um, sticking out a different distance and that's to, for intonation. Okay. And I think that a lot of basses people are playing when they go up high, you sound out of tune. And a simple way to just check the intonation is hit the 12 string harmonic on any, any and all of the, uh, it's actually, it needs a little, it's got a little bit of scratchiness. So you hit the harmonic on the 12th fret, that always tells the true note. adjust the distance between each string to get those notes sounding the same in the harmonic phase yeah. as the actual fretted phase and then you won't be out of tune. And you know those are some of the things I hardly ever notice unless I'm recording but when you're recording those things stick out. We should do another segment on how to intonate bass okay. guitar and right. the guitar. Yeah. That'd be good. Right. All right let's talk a little bit about tuning. So we've, we've talked about the strings. You have four strings. How are they tuned? What are, right. what are they? Um, e the bottom A, D, G is for the four string. And this particular uh, bass is actually a uh, jazz neck too. So you'll notice that the neck even tapers way down here, which is really easy to play. I love those. Uh, yeah, I love yeah, that for yeah. that reason. So, yeah. um, but um, then go ahead for the uh, five string. Well, the five string, you get a low B string. So you get a little bit lower range. 
and on the six string you typically would have a high C. Right. Um, I've actually seen basses though where it's it's the same notes as the guitar, so it's yeah. a six string right. but they're tuned to the yeah. guitar. So right. yeah, um, you got to be uh, that makes the octaves tricky though when yeah. you try to hit that high string. Yeah, so yeah. a standard yeah. four string or yeah. standard five yeah. string bass, um, you're tuned in fourths, yeah. which is really nice because of that tuning. You'll see a lot of bass players just will play us a riff that kind of highlights one of those patterns due to the tuning. just by using your first finger and your third finger and kind of doing some little riffs. And I'll just play the lower strings on the guitar. Maybe echo me on the bass okay. here. Like. Yeah, so there you go. You're a pro bass player. And once you play, lesson. and what you don't, uh, or what Dustin's saying is, that when you learn a line on the bass, it translates anywhere else on the bass. You don't ever have to correct for the B string like on the guitar. So you, once you learn a little riff, you can play it anywhere, up and yeah. down, until you run out of strings, but that riff is now good anywhere. Yeah. And that makes it very easy to translate to a different key. Yeah, and if you're in a key, like let's say you're in the key of G, what's really cool, this is gonna be a little on the theory tip, but you have a G here, then you'd have a C here, which is in the same key, here. So even keep that going. So you can just kind of hear in that little simple right. simple demo, the bass line sounds pretty cool, and you're just yeah. using three notes. Right. And if you want to jump it up an octave. So find the G, right, right. and then you keep the same pattern, and that is all because of the tuning of the bass, right. so that's really cool. Um, let's talk a little bit, you're a technician, you're an engineer, so tell us about cables, amplifiers, and just kind of your quick tips on how that works. Okay, well, um, I always believe that uh, you buy a bass amp for the simple reason is it's already got the speaker that'll hold it, uh, made for a bass, it has all the treble, mid-range, uh, made for a bass, typically a compressor limiter, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, some bass players that have a ton of control don't like compressors. Most of us, however, want a little bit of compression in case we pop a note too out. Without a compressor right there, that would have blown the, the doors off of this thing. So, yeah. um, yeah, um, so uh, a bass amp, the one I'm playing with right now is actually just a Mark bass amp. It's uh, about a $150 bass amp that only has a 10 inch speaker. Nowadays you can get great bass amps, small, uh, with uh, relatively small speakers. So you don't have to get the 15 inch or 18 inch right. speaker. Anymore. Something you can carry that doesn't break your back is helpful. <laughs> uh, we'll include a little link to that, by the way, in the, at the bottom of this video, so. But going back to equipment, if, if you want uh, great bass sounds, I would say if you don't have a compressor on your amp, a small Boss compressor and possibly a small Boss chorus, those would be the two things that yeah, uh, are cool. my favorite. Uh, do you have any uh, favorite effects that you like beyond no. the chorus or the drum? I tend to really like the low end of the bass though, so on, on that tip, I w I'll usually scale back a little of the tone knob just to get a fatter yeah. low end sound. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, let's talk. It's funny, both of us are kind of sitting over and sitting forward. That's not always the best um, oh, you, for you, playing that. And actually, um, that's actually a really good um, uh, prelude to what I did want to mention. A lot yeah. of times we'll sit here and practice bass sitting down. And everything yeah. about your posture and playing is then, look at what, how I'm at now. Yeah. And then when I have a strap, I'm way out here. Yeah. So I believe it's really better to practice the bass however you're really going to be playing. Okay. If so you're going to be standing down, up in a band yeah. situation, yeah. don't practice like this, because then your, your whole, everything changes. Everything changes. Yeah. I remember yeah. playing guitar for about uh, 10 years, mostly sitting down, and then I would start to perform. And yeah, it was like I had to relearn a little right. bit of yes. how to play right. the guitar. So. Um, so that's good. And also with posture, um, standing with the bass can be a lot more difficult than standing with the guitar. So um, it's just a heavier instrument. Um, the, 
the neck is out there a little bit further, which for me, even though I have long arms, it's just uncomfortable sometimes. And so your posture is important. Make sure that you're comfortable. And, and that even goes for your posture of your hands when you're playing bass or guitar. Make sure you're in a position that's comfortable for you, and that'll be a little bit different for every person. So. You brought up a good point, too, with uh, uh, balance, because I found that some basses are neck heavy. Yes. And when you hold them all of a sudden, like I'm this one, look, it's yeah. starting to go a little down towards the neck. Yeah. Of course, I've got a GoPro on here. Um, but uh, some bat bases are very balanced, and some you've got to constantly try to hold them up. And right. so uh, if all things are equal, I think it's nice to buy a base that's weighted balance-wise. You know, one of my students, funny enough, he's just a really good guitar player, um, but he was even better technician, and he would set up the guitars for me and, and file the frets and those sorts of things. And he said his, the first thing he looks for in a guitar when he goes and picks one at the store is make sure it's lightweight. I thought that was interesting because yeah, he owns all these collector yeah. item guitar. Right. I mean, he doesn't yeah. even have one under $5,000. And the first thing he looks for is the weight. Right. Why? Yeah. I don't really remember why. Uh, it probably was for posture's yeah. sake and back and shoulder and that sort of thing. Oh. Yeah, so if you didn't know, you can hear some of the conversation. It's kind of an open forum base clinic that we're holding really just to equip our team here. So, so um, you really have to consider how long you're going to play and uh, so the set being the length and how much you want to hold that bass. I've played with bass players that think the more wood and the heavier the better the sound. I personally don't believe that, so I'd go with the lighter bass, but okay. uh, they're a back killer if you pick too, yeah. too heavy a bass. The PVT40, I think, is the worst yeah. one of all time, and I have one of those, <laughs> so I know. Well, um, so let's talk a little bit about playing the bass, plucking the strings, getting a sound, using your thumb, using a pick, right. um, that sort of thing. Okay. So um, one thing that uh, uh, in any uh, techniques is probably the less movement the more efficient. So with regards to, you know, of course we are gonna be sitting down even though we're playing, but a lot of people want that really cool look where the bass is far away. Um, that's a cool look, but I don't know that that's most efficient. Okay. So the, any technique you use, like a lot of people, even when they're talking about slapping, they think you gotta do this motion. And the more you can just rotate, the better and quicker you're gonna be. So you don't need to put on a big production. getting back there in time. Yeah. And I've known guys who right. they're like, well, I just want to play it with yeah. the bass low yeah. or I want to play it so it's popping and it looks cool. And so you have to practice it that way. But it's not a technique you're working on. You're working on kind of the fashion piece of it and how you dress up the style. So What I love about the whole slapping technique is it turns the bass into a percussion instrument. A lot of yeah. times it's not even what notes you're playing. It's what your notes you're not playing and what you're popping and clicking. Show us. Show um, us again. So, there's some of that in there, so you hit a low note. That's awesome. All that stuff yeah. in between the notes. Yeah, ghost notes, yeah. Right? right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And that's what just is so cool. And by doing those ghost notes, you'll find that you're emphasizing uh, the notes differently. All of a sudden you're not on the quarter notes. You're coming in and just inherently, since you're clicking and yeah. popping, they're coming on, on the off beats and it adds that whole groove. Give us some, I bet people are watching, they're like, well I don't even know how to slap or how to pop and what that means. Give us just a slow version of it. So okay. where would so, you start to learn so that? So you always want to start on E minor. It's the coolest E major and E minor because you've got this. A lot of times you'll hit a D, C, uh, a D to E. So you're just using your thumb. All I'm doing is my thumb first, but I'm still then muting this. Uh, so it's a D, hammer on to E, and then just a click. Yeah. And then this note here, which is a D or pop. So I'm putting those two somewhere in. And that's for the musician to get creative. What finger are you popping with? Okay, then? so then I, 
I'm doing my index finger. I've seen a lot of guys use either or. Yeah. Sometimes.